Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production for Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out important news. And it's big news coming out of Fabled Copper. You can see on the screen, we've got Peter Hawley, he's the president and CEO of the company, trades in Canada, the stock symbol FABL. Uh, for those new to the story, and especially to see what's going on in copper fundamentals, we'll talk about in a second. Fabled is a junior mine exploration company with existing copper properties in northern British Columbia, including their flagship. Moscow project. Their timing couldn't be better for two reasons. First, copper prices are at or near all-time highs. Take a look at any copper chart right now, $4.75 per pound. Just briefly touched five cents, uh, five dollars per pound, sorry, just in the last couple of weeks. And Goldman Sachs is calling for five dollars and fifty cent copper in 2023. Why? Well, that's the second reason. Consumption for global copper is outstripping supply. A new uh, electric vehicle needs 80 kilos of copper compared with just 23 kilos in a traditional internal combustion engine vehicle. So the demand for copper is expected or projected to rise by 5% a year. That's pretty healthy, but supply is only increasing by 2.3% per year. So what do you think happens there? Price is going to rise. Timing couldn't be better. Uh, the company's flagship Moscow has about 8,000 hectares uh, with a high grade mining history. That's what's important about this already. Uh, contains a minimum of 22 documented copper occurrences, of which three are defined deposits with historical reserves and resources that are being upgraded. Today, we're talking about the Magnum uh, Mine Deposit. It's a current area of exploration that was mined from 1970 to 74, uh, milling, listen to this, 550,000 tons grading 3% copper. And with those great numbers, the only reason it came to an end were due to BC provincial mining moratorium laws that came into effect back then. Their loss is Fable's game. Peter, welcome back to the show, my friend. <laughs> Thanks very much, George, and uh, pleasure to be here as always. Well, look, we love having you because here's the headline. Fabled Copper reports up to 27.2% copper on the Magnum mine deposit. So we got a lot to talk about there. But Here's what we're going to talk about first, if you don't mind me asking you, because, you know, I'm a bit of a tech guy. You've got a management team with over 200 years of combined exploration experience. So you identified uh, a lot of the significant upside ex exploration using traditional historical data, but also cutting edge technology, including drones that assist in these new discoveries. How big of an impact did these drones have uh, on, on these latest results in your 2021 fieldwork in general? Well, just think of think of this, George. Think of yourself, and you're in an area with you know fairly fairly large mountains or hills or whatever, and you can only see so far, you know, vertically and horizontally. And uh, you have you do a drone survey of an area, and that evening, as you download your data from your drone, you're handed the results and you're looking at it on your tablet, and the resolution is down to three centimeters. Unbelievable. Think about that. Unbelievable. Yeah, and, and this, is, this, is, this is digitally enhanced. So it's, it's a 3D mesh, you know, with 8K photographs or, or video on top of it. And so you're looking at this and you're saying, oh, gee, um, I wonder if there's any mineralization here. And, and of course, you can just zoom in on things and you look and, you know, you can see structure and this and that. But but more times than not, because there's so much um, concentration of chalcopyrite and other copper metals, is that you see the, the copper alteration, the, the malachite and the azurite and the, the blue staining that's coming out of it. And so the guys automatically know for the next day, if they want, if they want to look at this, they, because it's three-dimensional, they know the X, Y, Z, and they just give the, the GPS coordinates to the uh, helicopter pilot, take me here, zoom. Well, there seeing is believing. So if you don't mind, I'm gonna share the screen because everyone's oh, gonna, sure. get, gonna, get, gonna get a yep. kick out of this at home. Let's, uh, let's hit play here mm -hmm. and kind of walk us through because this is a fascinating video. Go yep. ahead and tell us what we're looking at. So this is the Magnum vein coming across the mountain through one side and out the other side. And you can see the blue staining coming out of the walls. That's massive. Uh, chalcopyrite or copper coming out of it. And you can see the, the brown oxide and the gaussins and the pronounced structure going right through the mountain from one side to the other. Now, stuff like that, you know, 
you now you can attack it. So imagine knowing that exists before you even go out in the field to look for something. Well, what strikes me about looking, I just paused the video right there, Peter, is this looks like almost impossible terrain or very, very, very difficult terrain for a human to have to, to get to. So how helpful was it to have these drones doing this work rather than sending George up here? Because that looks like a pretty steep incline, unless unless visually I'm being fooled by the optics. No, but no, that looks no, like a tough, tough job. Yeah, when, when you're a young buck there, George, you're probably running the hills. But uh, no, we're getting a little old in the tooth. No, what, what it is, George, is from this video, because the resolution you see, you can zoom in, you can actually determine where there's a safe spot to land or whatever for the helicopter. And then from that spot, you'll work your way down. You, you try not to go up, you go down. And you go down and get to the face. And um, there'll be some pictures. You'll be able to see the guys at the face of that cliff going through the mountain or the big vein going through the mountain. But it's very impressive. I mean, you can see that this is not like some small little skinny squeak. I mean, it, this is a great big structure. Uh, how helpful were the, I got an idea of how helpful the drones have been so far. How much of a role are they going to continue to play um, in, 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 the, in the exploration project of 2022 and beyond? Well, the interesting, you know, the, the various products that you get out of your drone survey, um, you know, there's LiDAR, of course, but then there's the uh, grayscale. And the grayscale, basically what it's doing is it's illumination. And you put the sun at whatever angle you want and you shine it uh, on the three-dimensional topographic horizons and in gray, and it'll outline the various structures. And, and so you can determine all the structures of what's controlling this. And then you take that to the point, <clears throat> George, where, um, and, and some people have seen it in the Magnum News release at the end of it, is that um, the drone photography is such detail that we can zoom in and, and actually take pictures out of, out of the footage of where they're sampling and then put the 3D coordinates of where the sample comes from right on the picture for the exact location. That gets filed into a, a KMS uh, L file, which you probably used in Google Earth. And all the pictures and uh, that were taken of the sample locations and the sample itself, plus the analysis of that sample are all lo now located in Google Earth and you can zoom right in and see it and along with everything else. So, you know, you're just taking all the tools and you're, <laughs> you're, you know, for us, we think this is amazing. You know, our kids and my grandson, you know, he's almost six now. I mean, he, he probably thinks it's just be another game to play or something uh -huh. like that. Well, look, you're, you, you look like a young guy, but, but believe it or not, people at home might be surprised to know that you were doing this kind of work before drones existed, right? So how much more efficient, right? People can't believe that. Probably think, nah, Peter, he's been using drones all life, but there was a time when, you know, you were doing it the old fashioned way. How much more efficient have the drones made you guys at Fable to be able to, you know, get that, get the drones do the, the initial work, zoom in, see what you got, land people right there. I mean, by a factor of what, two, three, four, five in efficiency? Oh, I would say five, but not only is it five in efficiency, George, it's probably 10 in a cost efficiency because, you know, you're flying around in a helicopter and a helicopter is costing you $2,000 an hour. Wow. And then, and then on top of that, you're burning 187 liters of Jet V fuel an hour at a price of today of about $3.20 a liter an hour. So you want to take advantage, you know, you want to go to point Versus a. the drone costs, I mean, next to nothing, right? Negligible oh. battery time to charge it. Nothing, nothing. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, you go, yeah, no, it, 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 it's the way the future it is. It, it's truly going to change a lot of things. And, and one of the things it'll do is it'll, it'll tell you whether, it's, whether or not it's worth your while to go over there. And I know that sounds like cheating or a little bit like that. Not at all. Um, not but at it all. is. 
but you know, uh, the other thing, uh, you know, is very similar to the olden days. The, the 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 government would fly in Quebec. They would fly a big area, and they would come up with these. Uh, they called input anomalies. There are these little round dots, and they went from uh, a dot with nothing into it to a complete black dot. So you could have like half a dark colored one or a quarter one, and everything else. And these represented um, conductive zones that they were found in these um, surveys. And, and it was flown all over Quebec. And so, you know, we used to, you know, uh, our bosses would say, oh, here's a really interesting one. Go ground truth it. You know, and off you'd go and you'd take a friggin' float plane and drop you off here at the edge of some lake. And then you'd hack your way through the woods and off you'd go. And until you till the point where using a topo map, you figured out where the heck you were. And you started snooping around to see if you could explain what this IP anomaly was. Or was or input anomaly. So, and that that would take you all summer. And and without a radio or anything else at that point in time. So now you think, you know, just think about that versus what you just watched. I mean, it's 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 it's, crazy. Uh, it's 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 Stone Age versus you know the 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 Jetsons. Uh, that, yeah, that that's a, it, that's how big of a difference it is. Unbelievable! It's unbe It's unbelievable. By the way, who's flying these things? Just drones have to have pilots. There are th yes. there's such thing as drone pilots, and we know that from the Ukraine yes. war, right? You have to, don't tell yeah. me you're piloting these things, Peter. Who who's piloting oh, no, these no. things? <laughs> no, it wouldn't wouldn't be me. Um, no, we hired the services of a company called Drone Drone North out of Whitehorse, Yukon, and uh, the head of Drone North is Dr. Vanessa. Uh, Bennett and uh, Vanessa is also a PhD structural geologist, and she is ranked up in the hierarchy in the world of being a um, not only a drone expert but being able to take the complete suite of, of GIS data that she develops right. from the drone and be able to apply different techniques to it. So, uh, for an example, when we do it's a, not enough to fly the drone. You got to know what you're looking at and what you're looking for. And, and well, and, if you want, if you want to get all the tools out of it, you know, right. yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and these aren't store bought drones by no means, right? They're, these are a little special. We actually walked, lost one last summer, to tell you the truth, and went down during one of the missions. Yeah. That, that almost that almost sounds sad. That's uh, sad, sad to hear that. But let's get to the part about. The drones helped you, you know, put out a pretty great headline here. Uh, up to 27.2% copper yeah. on the magnet mine deposit. Uh, we're going to take a look at an image in a second. But sure. before we get to that, or a few images, you know, put that into perspective for us. What is 27? I mean, to me, when I saw that number, I almost fell off my chair. But maybe you can provide us context that either warrants that or, or you know, actually well, tamping you, you, down a little bit. Okay, well, let, let's, let's look at it this way, George. Um, uh here i didn't plan on doing this but here you see that okay that that's that's an ingot of copper okay that ingot this ingot i'm holding is one kilo 2.2 .2 pounds okay so one percent copper is 22.2 .2 pounds just one percent one percent that's right of copper per ton per ton that's correct so, so take 22 pounds, multiply it by 27 plus percent. Now you have the amount of copper and then multiply that by the numbers you're quoting earlier, $4 or 450 or $5. And that's the value of the rock in the ground. Yeah, because if 1% gives you 22 pounds, which gives you about 10 of those, yep. right? Am I right? Yep. Yep. That gives you about 10 of those. Yep. So. 27% copper yeah, would give you like 270 of those. That's right. Two. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty amazing, eh? Yeah. Well, let's take a look. Let's take a look at the, uh, sure. I want to bring up some images too here. All right. Let us know. Uh, I guess this is big picture where Magnum's located, but kind of walks through what we're looking at here. Okay. The, we own three blocks of claims. So the most Northern block is referred to as the Neal property. And then halfway down the property is called the Toro property. And then at the bottom is the Bronson property. And currently our, 
everything we're talking about is the work we've done on the Neal property. And everything shown there is results of we've released to date, George. And then the one in orange, of course, is the Magnum. So are these and just inside the Neal property, you're saying? That's right. That's right. Okay, so these are just inside the Neal. That's great. Yeah. Oh, yes. And we're not finished. We have more, more to talk about uh, down the road. But I, I guess what's quite unique about all of this, and you might have heard me say this before, is why in an area of about four miles by six miles do you have such a high concentration of high-grade copper? That's, that's the real big picture, George. And I think we're starting to get some ideas why uh, doing some between the drone and the structural observations and various things that we're doing. So the Magnum depositor, the, the one in orange is what we've just reported on uh, not only our first drone survey and, and went through the area that we actually surveyed, but the results based on the drone survey. Now, in our total land package that we have on the various properties, we did five drone surveys. We did three on the Neal property, one on the Toro property, and one on the Bronson property. Yeah, and there's Toro and there's Bronson. Yeah. Um, um, go on. Uh, well, so you, before we you saw the, the, the drone footage and we looked at it, the resolution, we see the copper and everything else. And you were asking me, how, how would you get there? It looks pretty steep and you're absolutely right. And I was saying, you know, the helicopter would drop you off at, uh, up top or, or someplace higher where it's um, easier to get off and it's easier for you to go, go down and to go up. Um, so if you look at the next slide, George, that you have, this is actually, uh, you, can, you can see, uh, one of the chaps, Ray, um, and he's right at the, the, the face of the mineralization uh, on the hill. And you can see the blue malachite staining and, and, and everything else. And you can see the width of it, uh, the, the big piece sticking out to your um, left-hand side. That's it. That's a, yeah, that's a, a diabase dike, actually. And these diabase dikes, more times than not, they follow, or actually the copper follows them, I should say. So this big copper vein going through the mountain follows them. So he knew how to get there. He knew where to go based on the drone footage. So that in itself saves you all kinds of, of time. And, 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 and by that. the way, what are we looking at here? Because I know that, so I, I see yeah. a lot of green here. Yeah, so when you, um, when you have a large volume of copper, one of the oxidization uh, byproducts is uh, malachite alteration. So it's like, you know, you, you looked on top of a, a, like an old church roof or an old school roof, and it was a copper roof, George. And right. when they put it on, it's all nice and shiny. And then after a few years, it turns green. And that's the copper oxidizing. And so here's the exact same thing. The copper is that high concentrate that it's starting to oxide. And so uh, a very good sign to see, of course. So is this a case of a picture's worth a, a thousand words or a thousand yeah, dollars? Can't, yeah, you can't, you can't argue with that one. I mean, that, that's, uh, that's, that's really good. But by the way, how happy are you guys with, with the result that came? That, you know, did it, did, was it consistent with what you were expecting? Did it surprise you? Uh, and in any event, how happy were you that it's kind of confirmed what you guys have been thinking about? Um, it's definitely confirmed what we were thinking or what historical data said as far as, you know, the production and, and what they extracted. Um, the ultimate question will be, you know, how much more is there? And, um, and we're working towards that end. And, and this summer we've, we've applied a little over a month ago for our drill permit and, uh, Hopefully the summer we'll be drilling, and that's certainly one of the targets, George, to, to drill this thing in depth and to see what it's like. So here, here's another um, picture, George. Thanks for doing this. If you look, there, there's the, um, a shot out from uh, probably it's about 800 meters from surface and or left, side left or right, Peter? Which one? Uh, to the uh, left. So you're this about 800 meters away, or almost a kilometer, 0.8 of a kilometer. Okay. And there's the whole mountainside, and you're looking at it. And you can see the, 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 
the lines going horizontally through it. Back, that's it, back and forth. That's a great big structure with unbelievable in it. Yeah. And then you just take one spot and because of the resolution, you just zoom in. So and is this the left. zoom in of this here? This is the zoom yeah, in right here. Exactly. And yeah, exactly. It you can see the curve and the in the rock and everything else. And there's the malachite staining and, and everything else. Now this thing convert this thing goes for uh I think on the mountainside on various exposures, it's for about 2.3 kilometers storage. So, you know, you sample it where you can get at it, so to speak. You know, you can't always uh, access all of it, but it is uh, very important. So sometimes you'll hear when people are sampling, they'll say, oh, I found some uh, rubble or some uh, float. And, and basically what that is, is that uh, they sample it because they're down below. So, so, so the mineralization is above them. It's too steep to go up and get a piece or whatever. But over time, it has sprawled off the side of the mountain and rolled down. And here it is. So this is giving you a good representation of what's above you that you can't get to. Um, but you only do that normally when, when you can't reach the source to be able to, to actually physically sample it and make measurements and everything else. Uh, and you've got one more picture yes. here. Do you uh, want me to bring this in here? Yes, th this is this is this is about as good as it gets. I mean, hold uh, on. Look at this though. One thousand nine hundred meters elevation. I'm not sure how high that is. That's the elevation from sea level. I'm not sure how high up this is, but either way, that's a big number. Well, it, it is, George. Um, relatively speaking, I mean, you know. We can go to Peru and uh, we go up uh, to look at some of the mines, uh, especially the copper mines in Peru, and they're all between 3,500 and 4,800 meters, you know, so, uh, and they're operating. So 1,900 meters, it's a pimple, so to speak. It's, it's not a full, full size mountain. But, you know, the, the, for us to do the exploration work, yes, it is challenging because why it's challenging and going back to your question about the drone too, George, is because of the altitude that you're at, you, you have a limited window to do your field work every season. And, and as such, you want to get the most done you can in a short period of, of time. So by using the drone and following up with boots on the ground and hammers, following the drone or using that as, as breaking the trail for you, so to speak, um, you can save yourself a lot of time and accomplish an awful lot. And um, when people, you know, they're, I think this is the 12th or 13th news release we put out on the 2021 20, results. And we probably have another, you know, 20, results, 20 things to talk about uh, of different things. And that's how much area that we covered in two months. I mean, the, the guys were extremely busy. Uh, by the way, uh, before we shot this image, because I want to talk about what's next. I know I know this is going to be some drilling, but I want to get more specific. You've got this business card here uh, for a reason, obviously. It's to kind of give us a relative, you know, rel relativity here. So talk, talk to us about, you know, why this is important. Okay, so uh, the reason for those cards that we have is their scale. So up top, those are centimeters you see, and down below, those are inches you see. So it's it's metric and standard. So you get an idea of, of scale of how big that thing is. But the other cool thing is if you flip it over, which of course they're not showing you the other side, but on the other side, um, it has all the um, various uh, conversions and calculations of grams to ounces and feet to meters to yards to all, all the various conversions you could think of if you're doing stuff in the field. And uh, and also a more detailed, sort of like a protractor type of thing. So, so that little card there, you can draw and sketch with it to scale. You can uh, convert if you want to do it. Um, there's a lot of things. So very extremely handy, about the size of a credit card. So very easy, you know, you just keep them in your pocket or slung around your neck on a lanyard or something like that. Bottom line, shareholders should be happy about this picture. I would. Um, that's, that's again, you know, uh, what was the assay, uh, 
Georgia was 25%. 25.1% copper. Yeah, so 251 bars. 250 of those coming out of that. 251 ingots. Yeah. Well, I'm keeping one for myself. You know, I can't just... Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, kidding aside, that's that's spectacular. That that that's yeah. that represents two hundred and fifty uh, ingots. So what's Peter? So I know you kind of touched on it briefly there. Uh, the plan obviously is to do more drilling. Maybe if you can give us a what the cadence would look like when ballpark drilling might start, uh, when more results might start flowing in, and how long that'll last. Because you did say you got to you obviously got to race against weather. So maybe give shareholders an idea of the cadence of, and I know we're not we're not holding you specifics because you don't know the exact plan yet. But ballpark, what are we looking at if everything goes okay for the rest of 2022? Well, yeah. Well, first of all, between now and you know, middle of the summer or late summer, we'll still be putting out news on our 2021 uh, results. Wow. there's just so much of it. No, there is, and I've only talked about one drone survey, and we've done you know five of them. And there's certain reasons why we pick those five areas to do the surveys, George. So uh, those will be quite interesting. The the other thing on top of that, as I mentioned earlier, we applied a little over a month ago for our drill permit. Um, the drill permit is for a total of 45 drill stations or drill holes to be planned. Wow. And that permit is good for, uh, or once it, it's given will be good for a period of five years. So at the end of this year, if for some reason the weather is bad or whatever, we can't complete it, we can go back next year and away we go. Uh, in addition, ballpark, how many, how many do you think you can reasonably get in in terms of drill holes before the end of the year? I, I, not the best case, not the worst case scenario, ballpark, what are you expecting? Uh, I'd be very happy if we could get in 20, 25 drill holes. But if it's a lack of drill holes, it may be a good thing <laughs> in the sense that I drill one hole and I hit big time and I'm loving it. So I'm not moving anywhere as I'm drilling a deeper one, right? All right. All right. And, uh, and so that's why we ask you these questions, just to help yeah, us kind of understand yeah. the cadence. And, I, and I, I, I think, you know, you see this thing and it's going through the mountain and up the mountain and down the other side. And, and you know, they've gone in the ground. And, and developed it to some extent. You've been in the ground, looked at it. So now you're going to drill this thing. And are, are you going to hit it or not? Uh, that unequivocally, you are. It's just you know how big is it going to be, and and how is it behaving, and has instead of having one vein, do you have multi veins? That and this is very common in these type of things. You know, you, you have one vein, they bifurcate, you might get three very close together over a big width and then they come back together and you have one vein and et cetera, et cetera. So trying to figure that out. So, but the good news there is not a question of if it's just a question, oh. it's just a question of degree of success. It is. I mean, this, this is a thing. If people look at other people talking about or other companies, and I mean, no, no disrespect by them, but you know, they're, they're looking for a sniff of copper because they're, you know, the, and, and it's the, the ground they're looking at is amenable to having, copper mineralization, so that's why they're there. But in this, this case, we've already got the copper, it's just how much, you gotta quantify it. And that, that's what we're trying to do. And what, what we're trying to do is take, not only take old data or knowledge uh, that's um, in itself is quantitative, but not 43101 compliant in today's world. But, and, but a big help nonetheless. The, no. So what you got you where to look? You couldn't put a dollar on it. I mean, you couldn't put a, the value of it, George. It, it is just tremendous. So this gives us a big leg up of, of being able to accomplish an awful lot, very fast, for in relative speaking, for very little money. If you if you compare it, so um, yes, um, should we have a very productive expiration season? Absolutely. Will we be going back to the Magnum for additional sampling and structural measurements, et cetera, on surface? Because we, by no means, do we sample all the Magnum vein. I mean, we just, that would have been almost the team for the summer and just parked right there. It's a great problem to have. <laughs> yeah, it is. 
but very hard to find people too now. It's even getting harder. Um, the so yeah, the, so between the drilling and and we're going to be doing additional drone surveys and something. We're going to be doing some uh, specialized um, structural work, which I won't get into. And, and we'll probably be hearing about a claw. Uh, uh, I guess a collaboration between ourselves and a university of trying to do something that's right, right on the edge. It'll be quite the announcement when it comes out, but we're just trying to work out how, how to get this all done in one foul swoop. Well, you piqued my interest on that one. If I, I, I'd want to ask you more, but I'm assuming I can't, but that, that, that sounds, that sounds great to have a kind of cutting edge collaboration. It is, and and it's funny because um, when we started talking, um, and I, I won't give anything away, but when we started talking, they were saying, "Well, we've been testing this out in this place and that place and everything else. Do you think there would be any application of this for mining and any interest?" I said, "Are you crazy? I mean, this this is, you know, the best thing since Heinz says pickles." <laughs> It, so um, we're, this is going to be a documented um, test case uh, of something we're going to do this summer. And it, it's going to be, yeah, it, it'll be a documentary style. It'll be filmed and, and everything else. Yeah, it should be interesting. So, Peter, you've got history on your side. You've got technology on your side. Uh, speed and costs. Uh, you got the macro environment on your side because you've got copper trading at all-time highs and no real reason for it to look back given the supply and demand construct. Um, could timing be any better for Fabled? And and if so, you know, if you get these 45 holes done between now and next year, will you, do you think that'll be enough for you guys to have a pretty good idea of what you've got? and, and and your next steps for to really maximize shareholder value. You know, in the big picture of what's causing all of this, you know, why you have it and everything else, I don't think so. In the micro picture of, hey, is this real and is this a real deposit and could you mine this and and everything else? Yes, I think that that's possible to do, George. Um, but I think the other thing that's really important, and, and a lot of people they don't realize it, is that um, we're I've been very fortunate for some old friends of mine to to join the board or be a technical advisor, and, and they would like to be on the board, but they're what they call boarded out because they're on other big boards. <laughs> you can't get on too many or you get in trouble. But um, you know. Uh, being able to to pick at their brains and and as data comes in and gets processed and having them look at it and they say, well, do you ever think of this? Do you ever think of that? I mean, that's huge. And and and, and all the directors, uh, the the geologist directors, uh, at least three others plus myself, we're we're all going to be on the property this summer for uh, a brief period. Of time. I'll be there a lot longer, but they're uh, taking time out of their schedules to. Um, uh, go on the property, so that that'll be very interesting uh, week on the property to see. If you got a decent internet connection, I'm not sure what it's like out there in the field, but if you, it'd be great for us to do a Zoom from the field. Uh, I'm not yeah, sure if that's, probably, if that would be possible. We, we, that, that yeah, would be great. Might, yeah, we might be able to arrange that, or if not, we could probably do uh, like a hotspot or something like that. Yeah, one way or another. Well, Peter, listen, my friend, you never fail to disappoint uh, ever when when you're on with us and. And obviously, it's credit not just to you, but the entire team, because it's a big machine. You're the tip of the spear. Uh, but uh, amazing, uh, amazing result. Great drone, great drone footage to put it all into perspective. Uh, and most importantly, just great contextual information from you as to you know the ingots. I think that was that was the best part of that to kind of put it in perspective. And to document on the record that one of those will be coming to me for every ton. Uh, you know, it was with this 250 or 270. One of those per ton, one of those coming to me. And I, that's great that we got that document. Well, you, you'll <laughs> know what your Christmas present is going to be. <laughs> it gets, hey, if that could be a Christmas present for all the shareholders, uh, that would make me happy, right? Uh, a lot of copper. Uh, I'd be them. very happy for that, George. I would a lot be. of copper for everyone to be going around. But congratulations, Peter. This is, a, this is another great interview and can't wait to have you back again, my friend. 
Okay, thanks, George. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening to my podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform. To Peter Hawley, he's President and CEO of Fabled Copper, trades in Canada, the stock symbol FABL. Guys, if you're bullish copper, uh, and there's no reason why you shouldn't be, if you're bullish on Canada, specifically mining friendly jurisdiction uh, in British Columbia, um, and you love the use of drone technology, then you've got to do your due diligence on Fabled Copper because the company's already got uh, historical results that it's working from. They're not just taking shots in the dark. They got a pretty good idea of where they're looking. They're confirming a lot and there's still so many more results to come. So to do your due diligence, get to the company's profile page on Agoracom because there's a lot going on here. So we've got a good big picture kind of uh, review for you. And then from there, to do your deep dive due diligence, head over to the Fabled Copper website. And uh, just don't tell us 12 months from now, we didn't tell you so. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.